Hi, this is Kevin Jans. This is another episode in the Skyway Connection Community Resource Library. Uh, episode might be a stretch, but you get the idea. So today we're talking about the Farsight. This is one of those things that a lot of people understand that it's there, but don't know how to make the best out of it. So today we're going to walk through how to use the Farsight. So we're going to start with the, the basic homepage here. This is the Farsight, right? So you go to farsight.hill.af as in Air Force.mil. So there you go. Start with that. And let me help you navigate this a little bit. So the first thing to see is on this, I believe in an internet website lingo, this is called a sidebar. On the sidebar, you can see here all the parts of the FAR. One, two, three, four, five, all the way up to FAR part 52, and then actually uh, FAR part 53, which is forms. So you have all, all of them. And what's cool is you can click on each one and get, like you want to go to patents and data rights, you go click on 27 and look, there's all the basic stuff and they're all clickable. You can get in, clickable, is that a word? You can get into, it's part of the FAR, and get down into the weeds, just like you're looking through a regular book, okay? So just like any other website that has all the information in the FAR, it's actually in the regulation. So far, this is basically what the rest of the FAR, the rest of the websites would probably have. There are three th additional things, three additional pieces that make this particularly useful site. Number one is the FAR site actually has each one of the logos for all of the, f not all, as far as I know all, but I'm not gonna go so far as to say all, but lots of the supplements to the to the FAR regulation. So for example, let me blow this up a little bit so you can see it, stand by. All right, here we are at the top, this is crazy big, but we're at the top of the, the website, top of the page. So you click over, you roll over this one, and it says that's the FAR, that's the main FAR site that we're on right now. This one is the DFARS. The Defense FAR Supplement. This one is the Army, the Army FAR Supplement. This one is the Air Force FAR Supplement. This one is the Defense Information Systems Agency Supplement. This one is the Defense Logistics Agency, Marine Corps, uh, Navy, Special Operations Command. You kind of see where this is going, right? And every one of these is clickable, just like the FAR site is. Again, clickable is a word I made up. We're going to use it today. So, for example, if you want to go to the, the SOCOM, the SOFARS, the Special Operations Federal Acquisition regulation supplement so far. So click on that and here you go. It's the same exercise. Let me shrink it again. You can see you get the sidebar with all of the parts. Now of course you'll see some of these are, aren't highlighted or sorry aren't hyperlinked which means that they're not used. So FAR part 26 isn't used in the so far's. FAR part let's see 50 isn't used. So you see that not, not all of these are used but a lot of them are. So if you're going after a, a SOCOM contract and you want to see what a SOFARS FAR Part 15 clause looks like and you want, or what, where it's prescribed, here you go. This is, this is the SOFARS version, the Special Operations Command version of FAR Part 15. Now when I say version, it's in addition to what's in the FAR and then what's in the Defense, Defense Federal Acquisition Regulation, the DOD version, and then this is in addition to those two. So it's, it's stacking. If you want to learn how all this piece, all these pieces work, you can also listen to the Contracting Officer Podcast, episode number seven. It talks about how the FAR, and then there's the DFARs, and then there's the supplements, and, and how they all line up. And, and a lot of that, you're going to know that about your target agency. I'm not going to get into the, 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 the nuances of that, per se. Basically, understand that this is a supplement. That's what the S on the end of every one of and Let me go up here. See the S right here? That S stands for supplement. The second thing is the FAR search. So we're going to go to the FAR search. This is essentially like a Google for the FAR, right? Well, you can Google, you can type Federal Acquisition Regulation into the FAR, and you're going to get lots of different stuff. But my point here is if you're looking for, let's say you're looking for lowest price. Put it in quotes. It's going to come up with that phrase. Now look down here. You've got all, the category of all. You've got any search words. So it's this phrase and all the, all the supplements. And hit submit and check it out. It says, oh, there are eight of those in the FAR. There are eight, five of them in the DFARs. There are two two times that comes up in the Air Force FAR supplement, et cetera, et cetera. It comes up twice in Special Operations Command because I put quotes around it. Now watch this. Take off the quotes, just like in Google. I think this is called search engine math where you start adding and subtracting characters. And look, there's a whole lot in there. So you have to be very careful that you don't overdo your, um, your search Consider what you're looking for. Just just like everything else that you search for online, you have to be very careful that you don't say, give me everything, and then you got a big pile of stuff to sift through. So think about what you're doing. Let's say 
that you're actually going after a contract with the Department of Defense, and let's say it's with Special Operations Command. I, I pick on that one because I actually helped write part of it. So we're going we're gonna to click off of all. We're going to click on the FAR, and make sure it FAR applies, it DFARs, and then down here we're going to click on the Special Operations Command Supplement, and because we're trying to thin the herd here, we're going to go with lowest price, and we're going to put it back in quotes. And now we hit Submit. And look at that. 15 results found. See this along here? 15 results. And it's eight of them are in the FAR, five are in the DFARS, and two are in the US SOCOM FAR. And it's two pages of results. See this right here? Now, if you want to see just the SOCOM version, click on that. And kaboom, there are the two times the term lowest price. In this case, it's actually lowest price technically acceptable. But there they are. You can see right where they show up. So this is a very effective tool for you. If you're, when, when an agency, when, I don't know, you're doing your research on an agency and you're trying to figure out what kind of contract they use the most that shows up in their supplement, this is an easy way to find that. It's a whole lot faster than using Google. And again, these are the kind of things that I, a lot of people don't know about, and they're free. So that's cool thing number two. And you can really get into, and by the way, when you click on it, it's going to take you right to the far site, to this, in this case, the Federal Acquisition Supplement for the SOFARs. So right there it is. There's this, it's highlighted. I mean, it's pretty cool. It actually tells you, you know, where it is. The next cool thing, actually, you know what? I changed my mind. There are actually four cool things. The next cool thing is let's go back to the FAR. So we start with the FAR site. We're looking to see a particular clause. So let's say we're looking for 52215-12. So we go to 52215 right here. See how the little pop up there says 52215 to 219. And then this one says 220 to 226. See that? I can't highlight it because if we move the mouse, it's going to go away, but you get my point. You get, they, all the clauses are in here, and they're somewhat sort of... You can also search by them. You can just type it into the search box. that would come up. But for the purposes of showing you how integrated this is, I want to do it this way. So we're going to 215-12 right here. Subcontractor certified cost or pricing data. Click on that, and bam, just like that. There's the clause, and it's in full text here. Now, it's not in full text in most contracts. That's why this is really important to know. Is that It's going to show up. All you're going to see is this text right here in your, in your contract or in your, in your RFP. If you want to know what the rest of it is, this is a pretty effective way to get there. And here's the part that's really cool. See this little link here? It says, as prescribed in. So FAR Part 15408D, which is this little thing right here, that's what requires this clause to be put in, in RFPs. So if you want to know why something's happening, and again, this is all about teaching you to understand how this process works, right? 15208. And I'm not saying you have to do this stuff, but if you want to be smart about why things are happening, this is a great way to do it, and it's super fast. So now we go to 15408D. Remember, this paragraph D. We look down here, and here is the clause. It says, the CO shall insert this clause in solicitations and contracts when the clause prescribed in paragraph B of this section is included. Okay, let's look at paragraph B. Well, up here, price reduction for defective certified cost or pricing data, which, by the way, that's a very bad thing, but in defective pricing. So this one is required in all solicitations and contracts that you expect to have certified cost and pricing data. So what this means, you know, I'm kind of stitching this together for you, when this clause is required, then this clause is required. When is this clause required? When in solicitations, when it is contemplated that certified cost or pricing data will be required. So now you know why it's in there. And you know what they're trying to get. And you, I, you heard, I actually wrote a blog post about what you can learn about an agency by reading their clauses. This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. You understand that they're concerned about defect about defective pricing. They're also concerned about subcontractor certified cost of pricing data. And if you want to read the clause, we're going back in the, in the circle here. There's the clause for any awarding any subcontract expected to exceed. It tells you that you have to actually understand that your subcontractor can certify their data. You see what I'm saying? Now you can see how this how the story is stitched together. And by the way, each time you click on one of these, it opens a new tab. So we're going to close some of these and get back to basics here. All right, so that's what's cool is pretty much anywhere in the FAR, it has these little described in. And here's a cool, here's a nice little fact for you. If you go back to the FAR, the FAR actually allows for all, not allows, includes all of those little hyperlinks. Well, until recently, the DFARS didn't, but now it does. Look in DFARS, 252, 215, pick one of these clauses. And what's cool is it says right here, as prescribed in, same thing. And again, going back, geez, even, even five years, you had to flip back and forth through the, at least through the websites, but worst case scenario, you're flipping back and forth through an actual book. 
You know, it's like flipping back and forth through chapters in the Bible. I mean, you can get lost in a hurry. But here you go. Click on that. 215, 370-3A. So 370. See the 370 right here? 370. Click on that. Dash 3A. And here's your prescription. So that's cool thing number three. All right, you ready for cool thing number four? I don't probably over my 10 minutes, but this is worth it. This one's actually pretty amazing because this is one of those things that I, I got to say, it was it was not used by many people. It was used by so few people that they took it off of the far site. And you know, being the you know, being the raging type A that I am, I actually wrote a letter to uh, D. Lee the at, the at the time, the director of of Office of Procurement Policy, and I asked her to add it back. And I got a bunch of people who agreed, and, and they said, oh, well, I guess there are some people that are using it. So they added it. So clause logic, and you see how I got there? If you go back to go back to the homepage right here, clause logic. And if you, if you go to the far, it's on all the pages. See, it's right here. I mean, you can click anywhere, and it's going to stay right here. So this is what you're going for, clause logic. You click on that, it opens a new tab. Here's clause logic. Now, what clause logic does is it builds a, a logic, a clause logic tree, essentially. It says these are all the clauses that should be in your contract. So for those contracting agencies who don't have something like the Procurement Desktop Defense System or don't have Conrite or one of those contract writing systems that's really good at cranking out boatloads of clauses, or if you're like me and you still want to know what clauses are actually supposed to be in there, this is a good 30 to 45 minute exercise before you sign a contract to know, okay, what clauses are supposed to be in here? Here's how it works. So if you're at the federal federal level, you're going to pick the FAR. It's pretty much, I don't know why you wouldn't pick that. And now we're at the department level. You click on this and it lists all of those supplements. Remember all the supplements that we saw? In fact, all these little pictures over here. This, each, each one of these is an agency that has a supplement, has a FAR supplement. So the one we're going to pick is DFARS. Click on that. And then we're going to click on, in this case, Special Operations Command. It's an agency in the Department of Defense. So let, let's assume, just for convenience, we're going to say that we're using... FAR, DFARS, and the SOCOM. So this is for a SOCOM contract because these three regulations would apply to a SOCOM contract. Now you hit enter. Wow, that was fast. Okay, not, not normally that fast. It's gotten faster. That's pretty cool. So here is your tree. And again, you can do this as a contract specialist. I would suggest even you do this as a contractor. So you, this is how you learn, right? It's gonna, when I show you what, it's gonna, what it tells you, it's actually pretty cool. In fact, if you're an intern trying to figure stuff out or if you're a, a new contract specialist picking up a new type of contract, this is a great way to learn what clauses go in there. So let's pick, let's see, we're going to do a solicitation, and I'm going to just try and just pick some basics here to keep this bidding, to keep this zippy. So we're going to do a two-step sealed bid, and we're going to say we're in the first step currently, and the funding is going to be $1 million in value. Is that six zeros? Yes. I'm going blind here at the end of the day. And we just, and again, you can get into, I mean, you can get into the NATS ILS here. Almost every one of these drops down at least one, if not three or four more times. I mean, there's contract financing in here. There's advanced payments. I mean, you could really go nuts. But, and, and I would suggest you do that if you're a contract specialist going through this, or if you're a contracting officer, or if you're a, a contractor looking to bid on something and you want to understand what the contract's supposed to look like, go into the, go down to the NATS ILS here. For purposes of helping you understand how this thing works, I'm not going to get that into the weeds. So you hit submit, like I just did, and then you say, oh, look at that. Wait for it. Boom. And again, I didn't cut this out of the video. That wasn't even five seconds. And you consider what it's doing. It's scouring all three of those giant regulations based on the variables I put in, and it's spitting out, these are all the clauses that should be in your contract. Granted, most of these are going to be in by reference, which means you're going to see this far site and you're going to see the title and that's it but what's cool and this is why this is such a big deal to share with people they go to the top here are all the far references so we start with the socom one there's a reference look at this view full text you can click on the full text let's see what happens wait for it boom pulls it up there it is you never had to leave this site you didn't have to close anything it's right there and now you know what that clause is for Authorized, authorized changes owned by a contracting officer. That's kind of a big deal, by the way. It's pretty. It's required in every SOCOM contract. And you can see where is it required? Well, right here. Click on this. Same exercise. Boom, there it is. Contracting officer shall insert this clause, etc., etc. See how this works? It's pretty cool. Now you get into the FAR. Same thing. Has a few t the full text. Has the 
the far site where it was 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 listed. What's this? Do? This is new. Four. Oh, look at that. Okay, cool. <laughs> that's a new that's since like two weeks ago. And I think they added this thing. Anyway, but it, it shows you how this, and so you can click on click, and and it it helps you understand when you add this clause, you got to delete this clause. And this is this is complicated stuff, but it's really cool that you can use this software to at least make it less complicated. So I would highly recommend you get comfortable with this. And anyway, I could go through every one of these, but what I used to do was I would go through, I would print the thing out because it was just easier to cross them out line by line. And then I would cross out the ones, and every once in a while I'd find one that didn't apply, or I'd find one that I thought might apply, and I had to make a decision as a contracting officer whether or not it applied. And then I would you know, make my case for it. So look at them all. And this is just a sealed bid. You know, imagine doing like a contract for an F-35. It gets nuts. But you get the point. They're all in here. And they're all easily searchable, and it's a it's a phenomenal tool. And that's that's the overview. Um, I don't want to. I think I feel like I've I've walked you through a bunch of this. I could fire hose you with even more, but it's not really going to be any more helpful. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, probably hits your attention span. So if uh, if you have any comments on this, maybe to add some more to it, let me know. In the meantime, happy hunting in the far, and I appreciate you being a Skyway Connection community member. Have a great day.